everyone today we are taking the chapter number 4 of the advanced banking management the module a and the topic name is the theories of the interest in this uh, we will take the mcqs and with that mcqs we will understand the concepts related with the questions or the mcqs and uh, in this way we can understand the basics of the whole topic itself with the help of the mcqs so let's go seeing the first questions the rate of interest determined by the liquidity preference given by okay before starting before uh, answering this questions i would like to give some basics uh, the theories of interest so what what this theories of interest means the theories of interest deals with the how the interest rate in the market defines how the uh, this theories of interest Uh, determines the rate of interest in the market so there are three types of theories in the uh, in this topic which is known as the classical theory the jm keynes theory which is also known as the liquidity preference theory and the third one is the hicks and the hansen theory which is also known as the islm curve so uh, understanding this uh, we will take we will understand the first the keynes theory and the classical theory so first the classical theory so what is classical theory the classical theory given by the marshall and the fisher it is also known as the demand and supply theory so uh, what this theory actually defines what this theory actually tells you this theory tells you that what is the price you are paying for the supply of the savings for example let's say it's you you have 100 rupees okay now this 100 rupees you have an option to spend or save okay or invest spend or invest or save so your savings or investment will be determined by the rate of interest in the market so this theory defines this now if the rate of interest is very high you will have you must have spend that rupees into the market but if the rate of interest in the market is very low you might keep it uh, with you in the form of cash or savings account so this classical theory defines only this part this theory is also known as the uh, takes real factors into concern real factors means the savings and the investment are known as the real factors now the next theory is the jm keynes theory which is also known as the liquidity preference theory now there is a very slight difference between the classical theory and the jm keynes theory jm keynes theory uh, here in this classical theory we have taken real factors into concern but in the jm keynes theory we are taking monetary factor into concern uh, in the real factors we took savings and investment into concern but in this jm keynes theory if you have let's say 100 rupees it also uh, this theory is out and out same with the classical theory the only difference is the real factors and the monetary factors real factors means savings and the investment and the monetary factors means money so this defines the graph between rate of interest versus the savings which is going downwards and this defines the graph between rate of interest and the quantity of the money so this is the only difference between the uh, jm keynes theory and the real real theory uh, classical theory and the jm keynes theory it it takes savings into concern it takes quantity of money or the cash in hand in concern if you want to understand graphically if the rate of interest is very high the person invest more amount hence will save very less amount with themselves and in this graph if the rate of interest is very high the quantity of money the person has will be less and if the rate of interest quantity or the cash in hand will be very high because the person uh, doesn't want to uh, invest the amount uh, at a very lower interest they both the concepts are out and out same there is a very slight difference which i have uh, told you that real factors and the monetary factor difference and uh, both are out and out same and we will understand the hicks and the hansen theory of interest in the latter part of the video now the question number 2 demand for the money by the people depends upon upon how they decide to balance their portfolio between money and the bonds okay we have uh, we have understood in the jm keynes theory in the jm keynes theory 
we have taken uh, okay first this uh, the answer is two asset theory two asset economy in the two asset economy is given by the jmkns so we will understand this theory with the help of his graph the two asset which he took as to define his concept or the theory is the money first thing and the second is the bond rate of interest of the bond or simply a bond so the two in the two asset economy bond or the money so if the person has 100 rupees he either spend it in the bond or keep money with themselves so this is the simplified thing the jm keynes took and this concept and this taking of only two things in the economy is known as the what two asset economy i hope you are understanding and uh, uh, in the real scenario this 100 rupees can be spent in many of the things like in bond or uh, let's say in fixed deposit or everything but in order to give his theory this the jm keynes took very simplified economy and took only two th two things into concern the bond and the another one is the money so uh, this question answer is two asset economy the position of the money demand curve depends on okay before starting this questions you should understand what is money demand curve this money demand curve is given by the jm keynes itself where the two things is taken into concern in the uh, y axis it is uh, the interest rate or nominal interest rate or interest rate you can take and in the axis axis the quantity of money is taken now it's a downward slope that's for sure the money demand curve depends upon so it is saying um, if this is the position if this is the position so how this position defines before uh, this uh, i would like to say that you must have uh, known in the gib itself that there is one formula that is yield or yield is equal to or yield or you can say interest rate which is out and out same is equal to is depends upon the market price or the current price do you remember this this is the formula of the bond we we have learned it in the gib so the interest rate and the current price relationship is inversely proportional so this question is asking the position of the money demand curve depends upon so how if if you take this position how it is defined how how come this positions can be achieved this can be this position depends upon the interest rate and the quantity of money that's for sure so whatever the options tilted with this we go with that so uh, the level of in nominal income so what is that nominal income how the nominal income can be defined the nominal income can be defined with the interest rate it has for example the interest rate is 10% on the 100 rupees so you are earning 10 so this is an income this is nothing but an income so the level of nominal income uh, relates with the interest rate and interest rate itself depends upon the money demand curve so this option is right now the second option the expectation about the changes in the bond prices in the future so this option deals with the price itself now the price itself so it also depends upon directly or indirectly with the interest rate so this option is also correct and the third option is the price fluctuation the price fluctuation it doesn't contains anything so the option is a and b see the next question is hicks and the henschen brought about a synthesis between okay uh, this is the third theory of the theories of interest uh, the first two theories classical theories and the uh, jm keynes theory has lots of ambiguities like it, they didn't take incomes into concern for example uh, there are different levels of the income for the different peoples they took only a single income for everyone but in the jm keynes uh, but in the hens and hicks and the hensen they took different incomes into concern plus they combined the theories of the classicals and the jm keynes into one and he comes with the following graph so Hicks and Henson brought the graph and relationship between the rate of interest and the income, and it has two curves. The IS curves, IS means investment and savings. So, who gave the investment and the savings? This two nothing but called a real factor. The real factor is given by the classical theory, and the another graph is called the LM curve. LM, uh, LM curve. Now this LM stands for liquidity and the 
monetary so what is that liquidity and the monetary means it simply means money and this money uh, uh, the this monetary factor is given by the uh, jm keynes so this hicks and the henson brought income into concern um, combined the keynes theory as well as the classical theory into one and he comes with this graph so we will deal the questions now hicks and the henson brought about a synthesis between uh, the option is c classical and the jm keynes theory the other options are lm curve and the jm keynes is curve and the jm keynes and the d is the uh, classical and the is curves the hicks and the henson uh, theory is also known as the is lm curve model or the theory i hope you understand me question is uh, next question is curve and the lm curve relate to which of the following variables so here we have understood the is and the lm curves so what all variables it uh, it can it has the variables are income and the rate of interest so the option is c income and the interest so this is lm curve uh, has taken income and the interest into concern as a variable the x axis and the y axis hicks and the henson the equilibrium rate of interest comes at a point so what is that equilibrium rate of interest so the the where the is and the lm curve cut each other that is the point of equilibrium even we have seen in the concept of the demand and supply whatever uh, where they are cutting they are that point is called the equilibrium point and uh, so the option is the hicks and the henson the equilibrium rate of interest comes at a point the is curves and the money supply curve no the is curves and the income curve intersect no uh, the is and the lm intersect yes the option is c next question as per the keynes if rate of interest is high people hold okay uh, whenever this type of questions comes uh, just move into the graph that we have made okay we will make we will make it another times so uh, the, in the jm keynes theory what is in the graph it's a relationship between the rate of interest and the money or the cash the people keep with themselves so the question is as per the keynes if the rate of interest is high so if this is the graph the rate of interest is high people hold if the rate of interest is high what people will do let's say you have 100 rupees if the rate of interest is high you will invest that money investing means you will have less cash with yourself so we will see the options which uh, the their portfolio more in bonds so a will be the right answer because if the rate of interest is high as as we have also learned that the keynes takes only two uh, asset economy that is two things only concern either the bond or the money so if the rate of interest is high the people or the or the individual will invest in the bonds they will not keep the money with the question is if the money supply remains constant and there is increase in the rate of interest the money demand will be okay whenever this type of question asks just go with the graph just move to the graph and understand what question is asking let's say if money supply remains constant okay the money supply the money in the market is constant let's say you have 100 rupees and you are with that 100 rupees only there is no increase or decrease it means it is not talking about the hicks and the henson where the income is increasing it talks about the keynes of the classical uh, the keynes means the money supply will be constant it simply means remains constant and there is an increase in the rate of interest so we will take this keynes we will understand this with the keynes graph you can also take the classical graph you can take any of the two graphs so in the keynes graph the rate of interest is increasing so if the rate of interest is increasing what does it mean we will take the money with us uh, less money we will take less money with ourselves we will invest more so let's say here is the point and here from this point the rate of interest increased to this point so what you will do at this point you will have more money with yourself but if the rate of in, uh, interest is increased you will spend the money into the investment so that you can earn more now what the money is going to be the money will decline because you have more money when the rate of interest is less now you spend that money when, whenever the rate of interest is high you will have less money into your hand so in this questions the option is b next question next question is, is if money supply increases without change in the demand for the money the interest rates okay you can stand this uh, with a very real scenario for example uh, the rbi push, pushes a lot amount of money uh, let's understand with this example let's uh, say rbi injects a lot amount of money or print a lot amount of money and injects into the market so what will happen 
if there is money money supply if money supply increased then people have more money with them in the people have more money with them it means there will be less demand of credit okay i am just giving you an example if the people have more money with them there will be less demand of the credit and if there is a less demand of credit what the banks will do the bank will decrease the rate so with this example you can answer this question like b it will move down you can easily understand this with this example the next question is the when the income increases and the income liquidity curves moves upward the interest rate interest rate as we have seen that the hicks and the henson takes income into concern and also takes alum curve which is liquidity curves so we will move to that graph now it is asking when the income increases now income is increasing and income liquidity curves moves upward now income liquidity curves moves upward so what uh, the interest rate is what if alum curves is moving upward with the increase of the income so what what is rate of interest is going rate of interest is also increasing so the option is increases so that's it thank you please subscribe the channel and share it with your friends also thank you